Hello there everybody, it's Sally Cathcart here once again and I'm back today to talk a little bit more about this idea of spaced practice. We talked about this last week about how spaced regular practice is really important and how to help your students develop that and find that practice time in their busy schedules. So as I say, the research really points very strongly as to space practice as being highly effective, really, really effective in terms of students retention and retrieval of concepts and skills. In other words, they, their learning, it goes deeper if we can space their own practice to uh, be on subsequent days rather than all crammed into one. But it is actually something we should also be including in our lessons and the way that we deliver new skills, new concepts to our students. We often find, I certainly I, I, I do, um, that you, you think a student has learned a new concept or a new skill um, and then several weeks, several months down the line, it's gone again, you know, because we haven't gone back and deliberately got them to retrieve that information on a regular basis. So it's interesting because we all consider, I would suggest, how to introduce new skills or concepts to a student. However, how many of us follow this up by making sure that we are helping them to retrieve that information week after week, after month, after month, after month? So here's an example of um, dotted crotchets and quaver rhythm patterns, dotted quarter notes and eighth notes, in other words, and how you could, just a really, really rough guide on how you could introduce this using the idea of retrieval practice then to subsequently keep following up on it. So let's say week one, all right? The student maybe experiences the uh, the rhythm pattern for the first time through a song or through a piece of music. In other words, they sing the song, they listen to the piece of music, they maybe move to the beat or they maybe are highlighting um, how that feels, that, dot, that dotted crotchet quaver beat, the long shortness of it. But it's probably not formally introduced at that point. It's so another way of thinking about this is this is the presentation, sorry, the preparation section. So week two, the, the concept is now formally introduced to the student and you do this through lots of modelling yourself and also through direct instruction because at this point you've got to tell them exactly what it is that they're dealing with. You can't expect them to guess something that they've never encountered before. So second week, that's the presentation where you introduce the new concept. Then week three, this is where the spaced practice begins really. Week three, you um, do, do more modelling. It's still a new concept. You've got to model and model and model the, the, and show them how to count. That's really important in, in week two and week three. How to count the rhythm pattern and how to clap, how to realise the rhythm pattern, whether that's through their clapping or through their playing. But clapping is probably the easiest thing to do at this stage in week three. So for week, the following week, maybe week four, um, maybe then you introduce a new piece to the student that is well within their technical capabilities. It's not pushing them on other, on the other fronts, but it is full of this new rhythm pattern. And of course, you encourage them to count aloud, clap the rhythm first before they actually try and play it. So real focus at that point on them continuing to count aloud and clap and in, you can also follow that up with um, more use of flashcards, more use of sight reading as well with that simple um, focus on the dotted crotchet and quaver rhythm pattern. Now that work can go on for multiple weeks with you continuing to revise and, and help them to retrieve that rhythm pattern. You don't have to spend every, all the lesson on it. It can just be very short spaces of time, but that retrieval is really important. So maybe at some point 
in week six or seven, you introduce a bit of theory work to them. So at this point, they're now then having to write down, do some theory work, whether it's writing in the, the, the counting for this, whether it is um, putting in what is missing in terms of a rhythm pattern. They've got to show that they have that understanding for rhythm um, th with the written work. Maybe in a subsequent week, the tables are turned. And maybe they have to explain to you about the use of a dotted crotchet and quaver rhythm pattern. Maybe they tell their parents about it. Maybe they demonstrate to their parents and try and teach the parents or maybe a student who comes in for the next lesson. Following on from that, we could be 12 weeks down the line now. Maybe at this point they are composing a, a, a short rhythm pattern that includes or that features that dotted crotchet quaver rhythm pattern and so on. So the spaced practice of coming back to this same concept time and time and time again over multiple weeks, over multiple months, what that helps to do is it helps the student to first of all understand the rhythm then they have to keep retrieving it. By retrieval, I mean from here. We have to help them make strong enough brain connections, pathways for that rhythm that they will retain. That pathway will become strong enough, big enough, wide enough for them to be able to retain that rhythm pattern going forward into their next stage of learning the piano. So, of course, once that pattern has become automated, by in other words, they look at the pattern, they automatically know how to count and how to clap it, how it sounds, in other words, then we can layer on new concepts and new skills for them to learn in exactly the same way. So, you might be saying, Sally, this is an awfully long-winded way. There is no other way. We, we have to do this. The alternative is what we all encounter on probably a daily basis. The students have forgotten. And we have so much that we have to cover on the piano that I have to say it's sometimes better to stop pushing forward and actually just stop and take more time to establish the basics. So spaced practice. It's important for your students, yes, it's just as important for you, the teacher, to include in your lessons if learning is really going to take place. So I hope that's helpful. I'll be back again next week with more on practice. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.